Manufacturing parts for industrial machines require special attention, as their performance directly impacts productivity. Industrial machines have to be reliable, efficient, and durable. It starts with assembling them from high-quality parts. Industrial machinery refers to a broad category of equipment and devices used in various industries for manufacturing, processing, and production. It encompasses a wide range of machines designed to perform specific tasks and operations, including the following. Machines used in production processes such as CNC machines, lathes, milling machines, presses, and industrial robots. Machines used to move, store, and transport materials within a facility such as conveyors, lift tables, and forklifts. Machines used to package products efficiently, including filling machines, labeling machines, sealing machines, and wrapping machines. Now, let's talk about some of the common materials used to manufacture parts for industrial machinery. Exact material selection will depend on factors such as load-bearing capacity, thermal properties, chemical compatibility, electrical conductivity, and other application requirements. Manufacturers often use a combination of materials to optimize performance. Metals are used in industrial machinery for their strength, durability, and excellent mechanical properties. Commonly used metals include steel. For parts that require high strength, toughness, and corrosion resistance, such as shafts, axles, and structural frames. Aluminium and alloys. For parts that require a balance between strength and lightweight properties, such as machine casings and components for conveyor systems. Plastics and polymers are lightweight, electrically insulated, and allow for increased design flexibility. Commonly used plastics include polyethylene and polypropylene. For components requiring chemical resistance and good strength, such as conveyor belts, rollers, housings, and casings. Polycarbonate and acrylic. For components or parts that require transparency, such as windows, protective covers, and displays in machinery. Nylon. Because it is known for its high tensile strength and wear resistance, nylon is often used for the creation of gears, bushings, bearings, and other applications requiring low friction coefficients. Elastomers, such as rubber and silicone, are used in machinery for sealing, damping, and vibration isolation applications due to their flexibility, resilience, and sealing properties. Composite materials combine different materials to achieve specific properties. Commonly used composites include fiberglass, offering high strength to weight ratio, corrosion resistance, and electrical insulation properties. Fiberglass is suitable for equipment, enclosures, and structural components. Carbon fiber. With exceptional strength, stiffness, and lightweight properties, carbon fiber is often used in high-performance machinery parts. Now, let's have a look at some of the manufacturing processes used to create parts for industrial machinery. The selection of a specific method depends on factors such as the type of part, material properties, desired precision, production volume, and cost considerations. Here are some common manufacturing methods. Machining. This involves the use of tools and machines to remove material from a workpiece and shape it into the desired form. Techniques such as turning, milling, drilling, and grinding are used to create precise parts with tight tolerances. Casting, a process in which molten metal is poured into a mold, then cooled to solidify. Casting methods, such as die casting, are suitable for creating complex parts, particularly those with intricate shapes or internal cavities. Sheet metal fabrication, used to form and shape thin metal sheets into various parts. Processes such as Cutting, bending, and welding are used to create components like panels, brackets, and enclosures. Laser cutting is another common method for sheet metal fabrication. Additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing. Additive manufacturing builds parts layer by layer using various materials such as plastics or metals. It offers flexibility in design and can create complex geometries, prototypes, and low volume production parts. Injection molding, a process in which molten plastic is injected into a mold cavity and cooled to solidify into the desired shape. Injection molding is suitable for high volume production of parts with consistent dimensions and complex designs. Finally, let's talk about design considerations. The part should fulfill its intended function within the machinery. The design should consider factors such as load bearing capacity, alignment, proper fit with other components, and compatibility with the overall system requirements. Material selection. Choosing the appropriate material is crucial to meet the mechanical, thermal, and chemical requirements of the part. Consider factors such as strength, durability, corrosion resistance, and temperature resistance when selecting materials. Tolerances and fits. Clearly define tolerances for critical dimensions to ensure proper fit and assembly. Balancing the need for precision with the capabilities of the manufacturing process is essential to avoid overly tight tolerances that may be costly or impractical to achieve. Safety. 
Consider safety aspects in the design to prevent hazards and ensure operator and user safety. This may include features like guards, ergonomic considerations, and proper labeling or instructions. Serviceability and maintenance. Design parts with serviceability in mind. To do so, consider access for maintenance, ease of replacement, and the availability of spare parts to minimize downtime and facilitate repair. By focusing on cost reduction and lead time optimization, engineers can manufacture parts for industrial machinery more efficiently. Strive for standardization. Whenever possible, utilize standardized components. This promotes interchangeability, simplifies sourcing, and allows for easier maintenance and repair. Design for manufacturability. You should design parts for ease of manufacturing, considering the capabilities and limitations of the manufacturing processes that will be used. Additionally, strive to design parts with simplified geometries, avoiding complex features or difficult to machine shapes, which can increase production time and costs. Find the right supplier. Establish strong relationships with reliable suppliers, which offer favorable terms for materials, tooling, and other services. You can also work together to streamline the supply chain, reducing lead times and ensuring timely delivery of components. Find out more about manufacturing end-use parts as well as how we help engineers produce custom parts for industrial machinery. When you're ready to get started, upload a CAD file for no obligation instant quote. We hope this video was helpful and that you learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.